Unlike a fairy tale where it ends well, the reality is even though we were great friends and it was super fun and we got to have some really special moments and special games that I still, you know, I still think about as good memories. I think that the the lack of skill and the lack of experience of our staff, you know, at the time I was 18, so I also wasn't like good at the time. You know, I was actually I was actually not very good at all when I was 18. And I think that inexperience um, and our inexperience as a team and lack of skill made it hard for us to catch these other teams. And at the end of the day, you can only go so far as a group of friends. Um, sometimes you have to make changes for for what's best for business. And we, we didn't do that. And I think that that's something that people liked about us and it's something people should remember. We, we stayed true to ourselves right until the end. Hello, my name is Kudo. For part two of my Complexity Black series, I chose to interview Koops, the head coach and analyst for Complexity throughout the run in the 2014 summer split. Together, we dive into more detail of the team that had to survive in a time period arguably considered North America's most competitive split ever. This is a story about one of the great underdogs in North America. Complexity Gaming came into a split where North America was at its peak in terms of skill level and competition. With LMQ in the split, almost all teams had to elevate their skill level to compete against their signature aggression. Team Dignitas and Evil Geniuses improved their rosters with new pickups in the offseason. Zion, Spartan, and Shifter, the solo laners from Team Coast, were picked up by Dignitas while EG imported Helios and picked up Altec. The original Cloud9 roster was at its peak in their performance, with TSM right behind them. Complexity knew they were going into a stacked LCS split, and they assumed the role as the underdogs. Did you feel your team immediately assume the underdog role once you saw all the rosters? I, mean, I, I think it doesn't take an expert to look back at that, uh, that split and see, like, in terms of pure individual skill, we were not the best, right? Like, we were a team that didn't have great skill across the board. We were, we were above average, and I think we could, we could compete, but when it came to individual skill, we were a little weaker, and we made up for that by playing a different style, trying to be more strategic, trying new champions. So we knew that coming in, that it would be a learning curve at the start of the split, but our expectation was always to hit, get that sixth spot. That's that's all we wanted was a chance at playoffs to play at PAX. And that was the goal from day one. I don't think that ever really changed. We were pretty self-aware that it was going to be a challenge, but we were pretty confident that we had the ability to do it. And I mean, we almost did. Week 1 was nothing short of brutal for Complexity. Not only was it a super week meaning that they had to prepare for 4 games, but those 4 games were against the hardest opponents imaginable. Team Dignitas, LMQ, TSM, and Cloud9. Their first game against Team Dignitas was a complete stomp. The early, middle, and late game belonged to Dig, who out-rotated and obtained more objectives than Complexity. Any attempt to steal objectives would lead to Broken Shard and the team's demise. Their next game against LMQ ended similarly. Complexity was on top in the early game with first blood to Colt, but gave their lead back to LMQ in the first team fight. In the next game, Complexity was outclassed by the teamwork exhibited by TSM, namely their objective control and early game decisions. Also, Complexity couldn't hold their own in lane, specifically Westrice. He was kept down by Dyrus and Amazing in the jungle. Uh, too much right here, they get the stun of Westrice, and everyone goes Erickson's there as well, Westrice has the stun available, but he's taking way too much damage. Good kill picked up by Dyrus. After these games, everyone viewed Complexity as the obvious weak link of the split. They were terrible at all phases of the game. However, their game against Cloud9 was a different story. Complexity this time had a significant early game lead off of a bot lane fight. Sticking around, yeah, they get the lantern out! The flay before the hook, oh, the man. cocoon misses too, but they get Meteos! The double bus could go over to Robert X Lee! That is huge for an AD carry! I just said, get killed to come in! Absolutely for Robert X Lee! A third kill to come in! Lemonation's gonna pick up a retribution kill there, but the kill is there! And Robert X Lee is 3-0 with double bus at 4 minutes. The risky plays continued in the early game with Prolly and Broken Shard in the mid lane. Prove a little bit of aggression. He has no mana here. He's not looking or at flash. heal or flash. No movement speed. The repel has not been used by Broken Shard. He can get the Q. He can get back in range. This should be another kill coming in. No! Oh! Broken Shard, no! Oh, no! No, he goes in! He could go down! You did not want to give him the kill! Meteos just came back. He can't make it. Holy macaroni. However, things started to go haywire in the mid game for both teams. They both started throwing. There's Trundle! Trundle, oh my god, balls from the other side! They pull him right into the fight! Can he get another?
the chomp down. Subjugate has already been used. He is going to stick onto Prolly. The pillar could be coming up soon. The burn is not going to kill down Broken Shard. The double kill there, however, Meteos with no mana throws on the ultimate. There's the shot, and it just misses Broken Shard. It came down to one team fight to win the game. They'll come out on top being oh, strong. West West goes in. That's the hit. That's West going in. Meteos is the first one hit up. We see Lemonation on the Zanyas. High in the back line, and Robert focuses him. Nobody's even looking at Robert right now. There goes the wish. They get more heals coming out. And this is beautiful positioning from Complexity. This could easily be game 70. Robert's hitting him all. Death timer. Complexity is going to take the game over Cloud9. 45 minutes in as they rush for home and base. Complexity obtained their first win against the defending champions of the NALCS, something that the entire community never expected, including Complexity. And I saw some people saying, wow, Cloud9's really bad, yeah. Complexity beat them. Uh, so which is it? Uh, it's, uh, it just depends. You have to flip the dice. It's like, who... Flip the dice? Yeah, you flip the dice. Is it a coin that you flip and no, you roll no. the it, it's You a roll the coin. It's a six-sided die, and all the sides have either yes or no. And then it's like... Who who is the team? Did they do good? Did Cole do good? No, it was C9 that did good, or C9 that did bad, and we did bad too. So I'd say that's probably more accurate. For for the first three games, we we're like big vaginas, like just be real. And then we're like we we wanted to, and then this game we we're like, yo, this game we're either gonna go forty and zero or or zero and forty, and we definitely dropped our balls during that during that match. Despite this victory for complexity, this would be the last time the main roster played together for the rest of the split. In the next week of the LCS, Prawley was not available, citing family obligations back home. Immediately in the beginning of their split, they were forced to use a substitute. However, Complexity had some luck in this issue. Complexity Gaming moved into what used to be the Team Vulcan XDG Gaming House, and during that time, Mandatory Cloud was still living there temporarily, so they subbed him in. However, the games were losses for Complexity. In their games against EG and CLG, Complexity once again lost engagements in the early game. Both EG and CLG played to their team composition strengths and shattered anything Cole tried to do. The next week, Complexity was hoping to have their main roster again, but more roster changes occurred. Announced before week 3, Broken Shard would have to return to Israel. His P1 visa had issues. Kez, the former jungler for Cloud9 Tempest, replaced him. The departure of Broken Shard was more significant considering what he brought to the team. He helped in Complexity's early game with his aggressive style of jungling. However, Kez brought a totally different style of jungling to the Complexity gaming roster. Complexity drifted away from Broken Shard's high-risk, high-reward style and instead put major emphasis on objective and vision control. Cole obtained every single drag in this game as well as turrets that swung the goal lead in their favor. Through vision control by Kes, Complexity engaged fights and made appropriate decisions to continue the lead into the middle and late game. This is going to be very big. Special decides to go right onto Bubba Dub, who can throw down the disengage. They're going to have to walk through the entire wall. A big great timbers. timbers from Prolly. Kes is in the fight. Gives a huge kick. What damage from Robert X. Lee in this fight. Oh my gosh. Cobb is the only one alive. Triple kill for Robert X. Lee. And they're going to push down the mid lane. Complexity won their game against Curse in a decisive and coordinated manner. Kaz placed 49 wards in that one game, whereas Broken Shard only averaged 10.3 wards per game. Complexity would play with Kaz for another week, as news had come out that Broken Shard's visa issues was worse than expected. He would be delayed without a timetable for his return. Week 4 proved brutal for Complexity as they lost against CLG and TSM. The root of Complexity's losses came from the early game and first team fights. The majority of teams specifically targeted West Rice and shut him down in the early game. West Rice tended to either die 1v1 in lane or get camped by the enemy jungler in numerous occasions. In the team fights, Complexity was not as coordinated as the opposing teams. Whenever Complexity wanted to go for an objective and engage, they would usually lose as a result of their indecisiveness or miscommunication. Not only was Complexity sitting in the bottom two, but news came at week 5 that Broken Shard would be permanently replaced by Kes. Broken Shard's visa issues was far worse than anyone thought. In an emotional twid longer by Broken Shard, he explains the entire ordeal. When Complexity Black entered the LCS, Riot appointed lawyers to work with Complexity to handle Broken Shard's visa. They filed all the necessary paperwork and prepared a case for the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services. They should have received a response when Broken Shard got to Israel. However, due to delays in the process, they received no answer. When Broken Shard did receive an answer, it was not what he expected. The U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services sent back his application asking for additional evidence. Broken Chart did not know what this meant. After all, these were the same lawyers that handled all of LMQ, Evil Geniuses, Dexter, Bjergsen, and Shifter's P1 visa, but Broken Chart's case seems to be the only one with some significant issue. Broken Chart had to wait another 2-3 to three weeks to resubmit the application. The lawyers got back to complexity and determined that Broken Chart would not be available until week 9. 
When you came into the realization in week five that you were completely replacing Brockenshire uh, in favor of Kez, how did you take it personally and how did the team take it personally? Yeah, so when it first happened, we thought it was temporary. That's right. I, and for like two weeks, we weren't, it, it was really in limbo where he was watching scrims and we were playing with Kez and then we we're kind of just going through and trying to figure out, you know, what what's happening. And then when we got that news, I think for me personally, since I hadn't been with the team as long, my personal connection to Broken wasn't as strong as the other guys. So so for me, it was a situation of, well, it, it sucks, it's unfortunate, but we have to kind of deal with it and move forward. But I think the guys who had been with him for a long time, they definitely, it, it was a little harder for them. I don't think it was easy for anyone. Um, but definitely hit the guy, the the other four guys, a lot harder. Um, having to, you know, lose him for literally no reason other than he has a visa problem, which is the worst way to lose a teammate, you know. So with Kez permanently replacing Brokenshire, the team could now fully adapt to his play style. Throughout the split, Complexity was known as something else aside from being the underdogs. They were considered a blue shell team. For some reason, while Complexity had awful games against EG and other teams in the bottom half of the standings, Complexity won games against the first place teams. The term was originally coined when Complexity upset Cloud9 in the first week. They did it again at week 6. Complexity was able to out-team fight Cloud9 thanks to their superior team fighting composition and passive play in the early game. They also upset the actual first place team in the standings, Team Dignitas. This time around, Complexity played the early game perfectly and placed their focus on their superior vision and objective control. Another thing to note is that Complexity played what is as of 2018 the longest LCS game ever. It was against Team Curse. In this game, it was nothing but both teams playing passive for the first 40 minutes. While Chris had more kills on Complexity, Cole had superior objective control and dragons to their name. By the time the late game teamfights occurred, both teams couldn't kill each other. It was because every single player in the game had a Banshee's Veil. And whenever one team initiated, Banshee's Veil would be popped and both teams would just disengage and wait for the shields to come up again. It got to the point that the only pressure that could be exerted on the map was through the top and bottom waves of minions that were shoving into the base. It got even more ridiculous when the fans started to chant fight. Somebody's got to have to take a hit sooner or later. Got to do it. <laughs> oh, man. We got the cafeteria roll, rumble going now. Back to middle school. Skirmishes started to happen around the 76 minute mark, but to no avail except for some hilarious moments. Did they keep up the inhibitor too? What inhibitor? Oh, oh, no! No! Put on the oh, sure! Oh, it's the dodge. It only costs oh, four. No, he's he's going to kill me. One more shot. Oh, my Try God. Work him out. There he goes. Oh, he gets him in the end. Cop should be good here. He doesn't know. He's playing with fire. What are you doing right now, cop? Playing with fire. He's here. gonna be walking. Oh my God! No way! Oh, he gets out of the oh, ball. Ball. <laughs> oh, this game. Oh, need side. Need new side. Stitches, please. The game ended in a team fight at the 80 minute mark. It's a new feature nobody's what? seen yeah, before. What exactly happens in <laughs> summoners when summoners rift hits 80 seconds? 80 seconds. A giant meteor hits the ground. Oh, there they go. Oh. Oh. He does get the Zanyas on. Probably also needs to use his Zanyas. Everybody's trying to go for the fast fingers, and if it's slow, you're gonna be Robert's on the going end of the They're to end They it. could look to finish Access it. Turret. Do they see Robert? That's they got access towards the end of the game. This is gonna be a through the front door base race. They are trying to get oh this done. Oh my god! Robert going for the shots. He's got a black shield to stay alive. He still has no summoners, actually. Few more. Holy shit, they win the game by going in through the front door. Complexity won this game off of Turtling to a historic level. However, instead of celebrating, they had to pee. By the end of the summer split, Complexity Gaming finished in last place with 10 wins and 18 losses. Complexity Gaming went up against Team 8 in the 2015 Spring Promotion Tournament. Team 8 centered their roster around superior team fighting and communication as well as their star top laner Kali Trolls. Team 8 gave Complexity a serious challenge going into all 5 games in the series. The first 2 games were won by Team 8. They took control of Complexity's downfall throughout the season, early game advantages, and uncoordinated team fighting. In Game 1 and Game 2, Team 8 obtained massive leads from the team fights. Malkai potentially wants to be twisted advance onto Westrise. Does have that ultimate if he needs it. It's gonna come through. There's the headbutt onto Maple Street. Gets him way out of this fight. That's gonna be Pop and Pop's going down straight away. Robin, no, Broly picking up that kill. Nice three man shockwave. So much damage on complexity, but the double kill coming through for Broly. Robin actually takes a cog to the head, but there's the 
just done. Little bit late on to Slushy. Ridiculous from Team 8. They come back in this fight 3 to 2. With Team 8 being one victory away from the LCS, Complexity stepped it up in Game 3 and Game 4. Complexity resorted to a split push composition with Westrace playing Nidalee top. The pressure Westrace exerted on the map created objective opportunities that Complexity was able to take. So despite Team 8 obtaining kills in the early game, those leads were mitigated by the turrets destroyed. Complexity won the game off the last team fight. Do a little bit more, but not now that it's a 5v3. Oh, Westrace coming in. That takedown did so much damage. Dodo now is going to get culled. Robert X Lee, ton of killing spree, but he is also just gigantic. Game 4 saw off meta champions picked on both sides. Cali Trolls picked Katarina in the top lane and probably picked Zed in the mid lane. This entire game was centered around Prolly's ability to carry and obtain leaves off of early and middle game roams. Prolly's coming through. He really wants to get to Maple Street. There's the death mark. That's going to be dead. Not even going to wait for that prop to go off. Dodo now is the target. Prolly's on him. From behind, though, the resets could come in. We'll see whether Katarina can make this one work. Oh my goodness, that death load is only barely stopped. Forced to flash out of the way. Complexity. How did that even happen? Bob it up. Cali Trolls is going to fall down. By the late game, Cali Trolls' Katarina was next to useless. Complexity was embarking on a reverse sweep to get back into the LCS, or so Coach Koops hoped, as he hyped the crowd when the game was over. The Nexus goes down, teleport used immediately, we're going to a game 5, and look at Complexity's coach Coop going nuts in the background, getting the crowd hyped, they're excited, one more game, says Coop, he looks like he's about to kill someone, oh my goodness. <laughs> In Game 5, Prolly was running his Zed again. The early game was going well for Complexity, with multiple kills going to Robert and Westrace. But Prolly's now here in the top lane. Deathmark does come down onto Kelly Trolls. See whether it's going to be enough. There's the flash coming in afterwards. Kelly Trolls is going to die. Westrace picks up that kill and a little help from his friends. They were starting to translate these advantages into the mid-game too, winning the first 5v5 team fight. Westrice is driver. behind them now, looking yeah, to, get to get in. Look at the amount of damage. Does get stunned up there a little bit, but it's going to be Slushy falling down. Westrice might answer as well. Cali Trolls picks up that kill. Bump it up now, so low. Death Sentence lands on him. The Fear Tether's there, but no, he's not dead just yet. Robin X leads back in. He's got barely any help. Oh play. my goodness, that play. Kes gets the reset, though. Porpoise Pops is so low. Maple Street on full health. Broly picks up the kill. What a shuriken from the backside. And Complexity playing with such little health bars, one for three. But then, Complexity started to get caught. Through There's the scrying all coming down. Is the Fear Tether going to proc? Yes, it is. Death sentence for the last hit as well. These catches by teammate translated into objectives, which swung the goalie back into their favor. And it got worse as the game progressed. Syndra and looked fantastic as Prolly's been collapsed on. Yeah, we do have the Fear Tether coming through as well. Prolly. Gets feared up. Not sure whether this is going to quite be enough, but the stress the teammate come round from behind. Deathmark's going to be used just for fun. Teammate was able to close out the final game of the series with one last team fight. Who managed to secure that base? There's the paranoia coming through. Westrice has been singled out, and he's going to get feared up. Maple Street's there for the damage. Not going to be able to make it to the land, but there it is coming straight in. There's the unstoppable fall. Robin X Lee and Kez getting locked up from that one straight away. That was insane. Takes the land into the arm. Robin X Lee gets caught. There's the death sentence. That was huge. Dodo is a beast. The second inhibitor is going to go down. And Team 8, what an amazing team fight. Complexity Gaming was officially relegated from the 2015 NALCS Spring Split. This is Coach Coop's retrospective on the entire series. I have two questions for this. Um, I guess describe to me if you remember the game to game reactions from you personally, from you and the staff, and talk about the game oh. for victory. Uh, it's been four years and I've avoided this question. Four years until I got this question, but it's good. I remember, so it was really stressful for everyone. And I'm pretty sure, like, I didn't realize how stressed I was until I drank like the four Red Bulls and like I sat down. Yeah, uh, four Red Bulls. Don't don't do that, by the way. It's not good. Um, and I sat down. I was like watching the games, and you don't realize, um, like you're so emotionally invested in each game. And you know, we were down two nothing before we could eat, really get things going. Um, you know, in the second game, like we got, we, we went to late game. We went where we wanted to, and then probably Shockwave didn't go off before he died, and we lost. And we're just like, okay, like, we gotta start bringing it back. So, like, we win game three. 
now we have momentum. You know, me being 19 and extremely stressed, I'm getting pretty pumped up. We win game four, and I'm like, okay, this series is, we're, we got this now. It's over. Like, they're done. Easy win. Like, we're going to pack this up, quick reverse sweep, and go home. And I'm feeling, like, super on top of the world. And, yeah, I don't remember why I did it. It wasn't, like, pre-planned or anything. And I think if you watch, like, every single player is kind of like, what the hell? Are, like, what are you doing? And I, I, you know, I look so, I look like such an idiot, you know, but at the time I was just like, I was so emotionally caught up in the moment and I was like feeling it because I was like, I'm going to keep my job. Like my dream, like my dream is not going to be taken away from me. And that was the kind of like the high I was experiencing because we had all this momentum. And then of course, you know, <laughs> not, not how it, uh, not how it finished, unfortunately. So that was uh, definitely no emotional roller coaster and i think it taught me a lot on how to better handle stress instead of being kind of an idiot when uh, i'm really stressed out so it was actually a good learning experience when i when i think back despite this loss the complexity organization had one more chance to get back into the lcs in 2015 riot announced the lcs expansion tournament giving two more teams an opportunity to join the lcs so even though complexity was relegated they had a chance to get back into the split for the expansion tournament, Complexity Gaming decided to split the roster in half and reform Complexity Black and Complexity White. Complexity Black would take the tournament placement spot of the original Complexity Gaming roster, which includes a bye week. This roster would have the original bot lane and Prolly, with new additions being Xmithy in the jungle and IKNU in the top lane. Complexity White would qualify normally off of their position in the ranked 5 ladder. That roster would consist of Westrice, Kez, Golden Glue in the mid lane, Impactful as the AD carry, and Low Poly as the support. However, leading up to the expansion tournament, Complexity Black ran into some problems. First off, Coach Koobs and the majority of the support staff for Complexity helped Complexity White instead of Complexity Black. This might be attributed to a falling out Prolly had with the staff weeks before. Prolly was originally benched from the main roster before the two branches formed. Prolly blamed his sour relationship with the management. Not only was there virtually no support for the team, but in no advanced notice, X Smithy left the roster to join Counterlogic Gaming in the 2015 Spring Split as their main jungler. Cloud Nguyen was picked up at the last minute to play in the expansion tournament. I can you said that while the team had 8 hours to practice with X Smithy, they only had 2 hours to practice with Cloud. Despite this, they went up against the relatively unknown Final 5. Final 5 upset Complexity Black in the series 2-0. It was a combination of poor drafting and immense plays from each player in Final 5. Their mid laner gate solo killed Prolly and made plays across the map. Shorter Ace was given his signature Lee Sin in both games and made great plays too. I can do as well. And they're going to start this fight off. They find Prolly, catch him up, and there's going to be the Monsoon. The Shockwave going to connect on almost everybody. And that is they're probably going to be jumping attack. in. This is going to get crazy. Destiny Gates on. Shorter Ace, he's being fired down, but they find Robert. They're finally going to pick him off. It's still a double kill for a Prototype, and they're marching on forward. Yes, they've lost Shorter Ace, but they get themselves a pair of doubles. One for Rux, one for Prototype, and they're going to get a tower. It was quite a deflating loss considering the unfortunate circumstances that affected Complexity's preparation. Complexity White was the organization's last hope. Complexity White came into the expansion tournament as the underdogs. They were against Curse Academy with experienced veterans such as Cop and Saint Vicious. Curse Academy had a much stronger team fight, winning every single one of them in the first game. It looks like it's just going to be a two for none, though. They're still going for more haunts. They're trying to whiff walk and get Kez. He's going to get a bunch of damage onto him. The death bar comes in from Keen, and they're trying to follow it up as much as possible. Four for one in the favor of Curse Academy. A double kill for Coppins. That is not good. Game two was much of the same thing. Whenever Complexity tried to respond to the movements of Curse Academy, they were engaged upon and lost the fight. Here, so they drop Kes Ward. Kez for the steal. Can he get it over? He drops the he Ward. He got the smite steal. And will they turn this into a fight, though? He kicks and will he flash out? It's a question. He doesn't have his flash, so he's stuck in there with Cop. The Rage Cage coming on in. They give him the shield to keep him alive. Can he safeguard away? No. The cooldown is too long. And meanwhile, Keen coming in from the back. A Death Mark comes in over from Golden Glue. Trying to take down Cop, but he cannot do it. And Bunny Fufu kills him. Coming on in. It's going to be the charge from Keen, though. They trap nobody in the cage. They keep West Rice out of the fight, though. Maybe, uh -oh. maybe turn around. He gonna, he's going to be able to pick up a double. Not able for the triple. Hauncher throws in. Force balls, rift walk, auto attack, he gets exhausted, but it's not enough. Chris Academy stomped Complexity White, and the entire Complexity Gaming organization was eliminated from the spring expansion tournament. On December 9th, Complexity released their main roster. With it included announcements of competitive retirements and breaks from each player as they determined their future moving forward. 
Robert X. Lee has decided to retire from playing League of Legends competitively and instead focus on his brand as a streamer and entertainer. For a while, he has been streaming a full-time schedule and occasionally working with high-profile content creators like Lily Pichu. Today, he works for Riot as part of the playtester team. For Westrace, he stepped back from the competitive scene to weigh his options while being employed as a streamer. In 2015, he had a quick stint in CLG Black as their top laner in the Challenger series, however, he had announced his retirement later that year. Ever since, he has been employed in Cloud9. Today, he is the head coach for the Cloud9 Academy team. I actually got over being a pro player ever since Complexity. Like 2014, I just haven't found the drive to play anymore, uh, seriously. I like staying in like Masters, Challenger tier, but I don't really have the drive to play competitively anymore. Coaching was something I never really thought of. I freelance coached for a while, but there was a phase that I had that I just got, I was completely over League of Legends, you know? There, there was a very long phase, but I still coached while I was in school. And while I was in Berlin alongside Reaper, um, when he approached me, I found, you know, an, an opportunity to start a coaching career. Prali was approached by H2K Gaming to become a head coach in 2015. He took the position and moved to Europe, working in that organization up until 2017. Prali obtained EU LCS 2017 Summer Coach of the Split. During North America franchising, Prali became the head coach of the newly formed 100 Thieves. Prali then proceeded to win Coach of the Split. 100 Thieves placed second overall in the 2018 Spring Split. Prali remains in that organization with high hopes to continue their success into the Summer Split. Okay, yeah, let's keep it in there. Guys, this is Neil, Prolly. We are entrusting him with all of our hopes and dreams in yeah. the first year. The, the first year is the only yeah, important year. year. You have to knock it out of the park. Yeah. We need to go to Worlds. You promised Worlds. Yeah, I did say something along those lines. <laughs> for Papa Dove, he retired from competitive play and pursued the coaching route. He ended up as the coach for Cloud9 Tempest in 2015. He eventually moved up and became the roster's head coach. His whereabouts in esports is unknown as of 2018. His last tweet was regarding Prolly's Coach of the Split award. Kez was the only member to play in the NALCS post-complexity gaming. He became the jungler for Team Dragonites in the 2015 Summer Split. However, that team placed last place with 3 wins and 15 losses and was automatically relegated from the LCS. We will get to their story in the future. Kez also substituted for Echo Fox during the 2016 Summer Split. Out of the 3 series he subbed in for, he was only a part of one win. Today, Kes has retired from the League of Legends professional scene. He has since joined his longtime teammate Bishu in the Overwatch League. Today, he is the manager for the Los Angeles Gladiators. For Broken Shard while in Europe after he couldn't play for complexity, he joined the Copenhagen Wolves as a substitute in the same split. He played a total of 8 games for Copenhagen Wolves, more than he did on complexity. Broken Shard is the first person to play in both NALCS and EULCS in the same split. Ever since then, he has been hopping around teams both in the jungler and coaching position. His accolades include being the head coach of both Team Dignitas EU and the NA roster. Today, he is the head coach of Gamers Origin. Uh, we're here in Gamers Assembly 2018. We're here, everybody is training back behind me. They're playing solo queue to prepare. Since we don't have any official matches today, we're just going to use the time to get accustomed to the area, get comfortable with the LAN, so that we can have a good performance tomorrow. Well, I've been working with the team for about a week now. Uh, we, I was with them when we won the qualifier uh, for ESL. So I can tell that this is a very motivated, very strong, very talented team. And I'm very confident that we can have a great showing here at Gamers Assembly. Our goal is to, is to win, of course. A personal note that I have not mentioned until now is the manager of complexity during this period, Dan in Flander. He has been praised by his former teammates for how he managed complexity during this period. Today, he is the general manager of the entire Cloud9 organization. For Coach Koops, here is what he's doing today. Well, I'm currently the head coach of Giants Gaming in the EU LCS. I'm actually, we're in the house right now. We're about a week or so out from LCS and still coaching. I've grown up a little bit. I don't, I don't do, you know, one more or this anymore. I, I took that one out of my system. I think you'll see a much more calm, collected individual. Um, yeah, I'm still around. I still love this game. And it, it all started, it all started with complexity. And if I didn't have that opportunity, I wouldn't be here today. So it's definitely, it's definitely a part of my life that I always treasure. And Whatever bad may have happened back then or whatever negative stuff we experienced, I think all the good that came out of it, especially for me, helped me not only turn, turn, turn my life around and kind of helped me change and grow up as a person, but it gave me something to drive towards again, which was getting back to the LCS. So 
it's definitely a special time for, for me. What's the one lesson that you take from your time in complexity gaming and are applying it right now to Giants Gaming? Well, if, well, there's two things. So the first thing is if any team wants to challenge me in the late game, they're going to lose because I am the king. So if you come past 45 minutes, you're going to lose. That's the first thing. Second thing that I took away from complexity is that when, when you work so hard and you put all this, this effort and all this time forth into something that you want to do, you have to be okay with the outcome, whether it's good or bad, and you have to be able to live with it because all you can do in life is your best. And it's a lot more fun to do your best with people that you like and fail than do your best with people you don't like and succeed. And there's a balance there in competition and life. But I think for me, the biggest thing I took away was just be a decent human being, treat people the way you want to be treated, don't run around stage screaming one more, and just be grateful because not everyone gets to experience being a professional. So getting to do that, that, that is the thing I'm most grateful for for my time there is getting to experience it with that group of guys. The story of Complexity Black conveys the dedication and sacrifice players must go through to achieve their dreams of becoming professional players. Their journeys contained hardships, both mental and physical, but they banded together and created a team well-liked by the community. Unfortunately, they joined the professional scene when the competitive level for North America was at its peak, but they were able to take their underdog status with pride. No matter what challenges was upon them, they approached it with smiles, and when they won, they were damn well happy about it, even if it was an ugly win. My name is Kudo, and thank you for watching my video on Complexity Black. If you support my channel on Patreon, you will have access to my full uncut interview with Koops as well as days in advance viewing for all my future releases. Thank you for your support. Together we can tell the untold stories of the League of Legends professional scene and eventually the entire esports industry.